Hi, and welcome to another CUBE Conversation, this time from BMC's Helix Immersion Day at the Santa Clara Marriott in beautiful Northern California. We're going to be spending the entire day having a series of discussions about what it means to do a better job of both digital services management and operations management, and how those technologies are coming together to dramatically alter how business operates, how customers get value, and ultimately how profits are generated. We're going to start this conversation with a CDO, a Chief Digital Officer from Genpact, Sanjay Sridhavasta. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you very much. So to start, Tell us a little bit about Genpact. It's an interesting company, growing Absolutely. fast. We are indeed. Uh, Genpact is a large global professional services provider for digital transformation services. We serve many of the Fortune 500 companies around the world, and we help them think through their business processes and the business models and digitally transform that to take advantage of so all of the new capabilities that are coming through. So digital service outcomes is a very important feature of that because I presume that when you have those conversations with customers, you're talking about the outcomes that they're trying to achieve yep. and not just the services that you're going to provide. That's right. So tell us a little bit about what is a digital service outcome and why is it so important? Yeah. Well, I think the reality is that what technology is doing is it's disintermediating the ecosystem so many of the industries our clients operate in. And they have to go back and reimagine their value proposition at the core of what they do with the use of new innovative technologies. And it's that intersection of new capabilities, of new innovative business models that really use emerging technologies but intersect them with their business models, with their business processes and the requirements of their clients and help them rethink, reimagine and deliver the new value proposition. That's really what it's all about. So a digital service outcome would then be the things that the business must do and must do well, but ideally with a different experience or with a different degree of flexibility and agility or with a different cost profile. Have I got that right? Correct. So when we think about that, what are some of the key elements of a digital service success? We like to think about three um, critical success factors in driving any digital transformation. Uh, the first one is the notion of experience. And what I mean by that is not user interface for a piece of software, but the journey of a customer, an employee, a provider, a partner, in engaging with you and your business model. And we think about journey mapping that scientifically, we think about design thinking on the back of that, and we think about reimagining what the new experience looks like. One of the largest things we've learned in the industry is digital transformation on the back of cost takeout or productivity or efficiency is, is, is insufficient to drive and optimize the value that digital can bring. And using experience as the compass, as sort of the north star in that journey, is a meaningful differentiator and driver of business benefit. So that's number one. I think the second area that's become increasingly apparent is the intersection of domain with digital. And the thinking there is that to materialize the benefit of digital in an enterprise, you have to intersect it with the specifics of that business, how users interact, what clients seek, um, how does business actually happen? You know, we talk about artificial intelligence a lot. We do a lot of work in AI as an example. And the key thing about machine learning is goal orientation. And what is goal orientation? It's about understanding the specifics of the environments. You can actually orient the goal of the machine learning algorithm to deliver higher, high accuracy results. And it's something that can often easily get overlooked. So indexing on the two halves of the whole, the yin and the yang, the, 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 the piece around digital and the innovative technologies and being able to leverage and take advantage of them, but equally be founded in domain, understand the environment and use that knowledge to drive the right materialization of the end outcome. And that's the second um, critical success factor, I think, to get it right. I think the third one is the notion of how do you build a framework for innovation? You know, it's not the sort of thing where large Fortune company, 100, 500, Fortune 500 companies can necessarily experiment and, you know, it's a little bit of a go happy, go lucky strategy. It doesn't really work. You have to innovate at scale. You have to do it in a fundamental fashion. You have to do it as a critical success factor. And so one of the biggest things we focus on is how do you innovate at the edge? Innovation must be at the edge. This is where the rubber meets the road. But governance has to be at the core. Well, let me build on that for a second, because you said innovation's at the edge. So basically that means 
where the brand promise is being enacted for the customer. And that could be in an industrial automation setting or it could be in Consumer just making a recommendation. Setting, it could be any number of things. But correct. it's where the value proposition is realized for the customer. Correct. Okay. That's exactly right. And that's where innovation must happen. So as a large corporation, you must be, you know, it's important to set up a framework that allows you to do innovation at the edge. Otherwise, it's not meaningful innovation, if you will. It's just a lot of busy work. And yet as you do that, and as you change your business model, as you bring new components to the equation, how do you drive governance? And it's increasingly becoming more important. You think about, we're going to be in an AI first world increasingly. More and more, that's the reality of the world we're going in. And in that AI first world, you know, I, I, uh, I work here in Palo Alto, I work in my office, a couple of hundred people in any given day. If tomorrow morning I walked in and hundred people didn't show up for work, I would know right away because I can see them. Now fast forward to an environment where we have digital workers, we have automation bots, we have conversational AI chatbots. And in that world, understanding which of my um, AI components are on, which ones are off, which ones showed up for work today, which ones fell sick, and really being able to understand that governance. And that's just the productivity piece of it. Then you think about data and security. Um, AI changes complete dimensions on that and you think about bias and explainability, which has become increasingly important, and the notion of a digital ethics board, and thinking about ethics more pervasively. So I think that companies and clients we serve that do really well in digital transformation are those that keen on those three things. The notion of experience is the true compass for how you drive transformation. The ability to intermix domain and digital in a meaningfully uh, intersecting fashion, and to be thoughtful, proactive and get governance right up front in the journey to come. So let me again build on that a little bit because uh, uh, people are increasingly recognizing that we're not going to centralize with cloud, we're going to greater distribute. We're going to distribute data more, we're going to distribute function more. But you just added another dimension that some, some of us have been thinking about for a long time and that's this notion of distributing authorities. Yep. So that an individual at the edge can make the decision based on the data and the resources that are available with the appropriate set of authorities, and that has to be handled at a central, in a, in a, in a overall coherent, governed way. So that leads to the next question. And just before you go there, I mean, I think the best example of that is we do that, most corporations do that really well in the financial s scheme of things. Businesses at the edge make decisions on a day-to-day -day basis on pricing and, and relationships and so on and so forth, and yet there's a central audit committee that looks through the financials and makes sure it meets the right requirements and has the right framework. And much in the same way, we're going to start seeing digital ethics committees that become part of these large corporations as they think about digitizing the business. Governance at the end of the day is how do you, how do you orchestrate multiple divergent claims against a common set of assets. And, and being able to do that is absolutely essential. And it leads to this notion of, we've got this I, these ideas of digital business, digital services, and operations management. How are we going to weave them together, utilizing some of these new technologies, new fabrics, that are now possible to both achieve the outcomes we're talking about at scale and at speed? Yeah, well the, the, the technology capabilities are improving really well in that area. And so the good news is there's a set of tools that are now available that give you the ingredients, the, the components of the recipe that's required to make dinner, if you will. You know, the, the work that needs to happen is actually how to orchestrate the, that, to figure out which components need to come in and how do you pull together a vertical stack that has the right components to meet your needs today and more importantly, to address the needs of the future because this is changing like no other time in history. You want options with everything you do now, you want to make sure that you have a stream of options for the future and that's especially important here. That's right, that's exactly right. And the, and the, the, the quick framework we've established there is sort of the three-legged stool of how do you integrate quickly, how do you modularize your investments, and how do you govern them into one integrated whole? And those become really important. So I'll give you examples. You know, much of the work we do, we'll work with a consumer bank, for instance, and they'll want to do a robotic process automation engagement. We'll run that for nine months, they'll get 1,800 robots up and running. And the next question becomes, well now we have all this data that we didn't really have because now we have an RPA running. How do I learn some machine learning insights from there? And so we then work with them to actually drive some insights and get these uh, questions answered. And then the uh, engagement changes to, well now that we have this pattern recognition, that we understand what questions are going to be asked, how do I respond to those questions a, automatically, and before they get asked, this notion of next best action. And so you think about that journey of a, of a traditional client, you know, the requirements change from robotics to machine learning, 
to conversational AI to something else. And keeping that string of investments, that, that innovative sort of streak true, and yet being able to manage, govern, and protect the investments, that's the key role. And especially if we do want to look at innovation at the edge because we want to see some commonalities. Otherwise, we freak people out along the way, don't that's we? That's exactly right. Sanjay Srivasa, thank you very much for being on theCUBE. Pleasure, thank you for having me. And once again, I'm Peter Burris, and we'll be back with our next guest shortly from BMC Helix Immersion Day here at the Santa Clara Marriott. Thanks very much for listening.